ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Star Destroyer Gaming, and we are here um, with the first of uh, my new series for the um, Warno. Do I say Steel Division 2? I mean Warno Guides. It's just, it's muscle memory at this point. Um, so, in these guides, I'm going to go through every division and kind of show you the best way to utilize it. Every division is good at something. Um, and. Uh, the division that we're going to be reviewing today is the 5th Panzer Division. I'm going to show you all the best way to use it, go through a whole game with me, just natural gameplay here, and kind of point out the strategies that I'm using. Uh, and hopefully, um, y'all can learn something from this game and uh, become better players yourselves. So, um, I'm just going to start here. So, every um, division has something that it's good at. Um, you know, you've got your infantry divisions, you've got, you know, this division has good infantry. Um, you know, and every division has different tabs that are good, you know, infantry, AA, reconnaissance. And this division actually has really good infantry, AA, and reconnaissance. Um, but the reason that you're taking the German tank division, um, is probably gonna be the, uh, is gonna be the tanks. Um, you've got your Leopard 283s here. That's what we're gonna build our battle group around. Uh, and I have a pair of them ready to go there. Those are very powerful tanks. Um, they can pretty much take on almost anything else in the game and not have too much of an issue, especially when you have a pair of them. Those are going to really tear apart um, like any Warsaw packed armor that you're going to encounter. Um, so those come highly recommended from me. Um, our field of battle is going to be right here in this sector. And um, everything that I'm deploying here it may seem kind of random, but everything I'm deploying is for the purpose of securing um, a fighting ground for the Leopard 2s. So you're going to want to build this battle group around your Leopard 283s and let them work to their best effect. So here, this area is a great open kind of killing ground where I can bring my Leopards out. Um, so I brought Reconnaissance out here, and that's going to let the Leopards see their targets. I've got Anti-Aircraft to protect them, and then the Infantry here. I'm pushing up through the forest here because you don't want your Leopards out here with the enemy flanking around you. So everything here is designed around making these leopards be as effective as possible. All right, so game starting now. Um, depending on what the enemy deck is, you can look at the warning order here, and they've got a couple of these um, airborne divisions, um, and those are probably the best counter that the Warsaw Pact has right now to an armored division, especially the German one. Um, their Aculas are really strong uh, against tanks, so really want to watch out for those but hopefully we don't run into an airborne division because the best thing that you can use these tanks for is to wipe out other tanks that being said if they have an airborne division the tanks can kind of bludgeon their way through their defenses a lot of time as long as you have adequate aa because these tanks are really strong and they can take a lot of hits without going down um let's admire the cool plane model for a second okay so Ideally, you'll probably notice I didn't move my infantry on this road. I moved them down to here because a lot of time when the enemy has airborne divisions, so they'll move them straight through here. Um, I'm not sure if that's airborne or not. I don't think so. Um, looks like, yeah, okay. We've got this guy's kind of mixed and matched his forces here. He's got some reconnaissance sweats now, so that's not the airborne division. So we should be okay in that department. Um, unless he's kind of unloading. I hope this guy notices he's got a nice juicy target right there for him. I can even mark it if he wants to, because, yeah, there he goes. Sweet. Yeah, that is nice. Okay, so we've got a good reconnaissance setup now, as you can see. We're getting some good viewpoints here, and they have AA that's starting to take this guy out. Um, but that's what I have my tanks here for. So our infantry is coming up right on schedule. I'm going to push my tanks right through this tree line here and engage these enemies that are starting to pull up. Oh no, you better unload, bro. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it just came out totally unscathed from that. Okay, and when in doubt, I always like to drop a little bit more reconnaissance down. So maybe we'll get some reconnaissance going here. And then, when it comes to this division, you're also going to want to have plenty of AA coverage available. Looks like this guy's pushing up most of the infantry here. I'm not seeing any enemy armor. That's okay. Uh, the one thing this division does lack 
that I would be aware of is that uh, your helicopter tab is not going to have much. You got anti tank helicopters, but I don't use it very much because the tanks are the best thing in taking out other tanks, honestly. There we go. You're attracting some attention there. Perfect. Just going to slowly bludgeon our way forward here. It looks like the enemy has realized that they're about to be in trouble with these guys. Okay, and these guys are unloaded, so let's start pushing them up. I really don't want one of those Spetsnaz there to get a side shot onto one of my tanks. Um, that would be unfortunate. Looks like this guy's really putting his Apache at risk here, though, trying to spot those Spetsnaz. There we go. Okay, this guy's opener is definitely not doing super Especially because he seems like he split his attention there in two ways. So I think we'll move this guy into this position. That gives him a good view of the field and he can knock out any transports that come up the road. I'm glad that these infantry didn't run into any trouble, but it's better safe than sorry in my opinion. So we're going to move a little infantry battle group in here again and try to push up this side. So we'll have two infantry groups moving up independently. And then... Um, you got my tank sitting pretty right here. So, it looks like my allies opener is pretty much gone on that side, which is fortunate for him. So, we may have to drop some support over there for him. It's too bad he moved those kind of like laterally like that. He kind of put him in trouble. Let's turn these off here because you don't want those getting hit by... Uh, Enemy AA. Now, funnily enough, it looks like there's actually a tank threat here. Um, just make me want to move. So, move some troops into the city from the side. Um, and then also, soon, I want to start capturing this zone here. We can move up uh, one of our command tanks here and grab that. So, the infantry here and the martyrs, these are not very strong infantry squads. Um, they're actually pretty weak. Um, but uh, what their strength is going to be is that um, when you push them up, you've got the little infantry squads. You can grab a flank like this and use the martyrs to cover the open ground here with those AGTMs that they come with. While waiting, I'm going to drop some more reconnaissance in. If it seems excessive, um, it's just it's always better to have more recon than less, in my opinion, so you can kind of see the enemy movements and anticipate their actions. It looks like the enemy is actually moving up pretty fast, so I think next tick, I do want to get a command tank for this. Ideally, I like to use a command tank to seize forward areas, but if you have to and your allies haven't grabbed them with the softer ones, you can pick up some rear zones as well. But it depends on the kind of CV you buy kind of strategy you might want to take. This airborne division is actually just doing fine here against these guys, it seems. So next step for us is going to be trying to secure this lane here and getting our tank CV up in there. So the next tick will bring a tank CV out neutralize their control of that zone. It looks like here we have zones that are just not capped at all. Which is unfortunate. Like, I hate to be a busybody, but it's kind of bad. Okay, cool. Looks like we're engaging some of the reconnaissance troops there. By the time that tank gets up there, that should be secured. It's a little bit too far away, but it'd be nice if we could take that guy out like that. Here comes our martyrs coming in. So since we have these for Inspire available, I want to move one up to there. And if we can, moving one to here would be great. 
Not sure if that's going to be very practical, though. This is infantry. We'll take this to kind of tie down this flank, and we'll keep the martyrs here to engage any enemy vehicles that present themselves. And all those auto cannons should make short work of anything soft that comes out of this sector here. That's the perfect target for him there. Okay, AA wise, I'm going to sprinkle some of these in now. I really like these villages because um, they have no radar. And it kind of sounds weird to say that's a plus, but I know that it won't ever be taken off by SEAD. So, unlike the American Vulcans, I can just sprinkle these around and I never have to worry about it. Okay, and it looks like we have some enemy heavy armor presenting itself right here. This, uh, T-80 BV. So I don't like turning my side here, but I kind of have to... If I'm going to engage these guys here. Makes me pretty nervous. Ooh, look, we almost have him. Really hate exposing the rear sector here, but I think this is something we have to do now. Yeah, we could just comfortably put those guys on our turn fire there. Oh, nice. Yep, punishing that, punishing that movement out there for him to try to get some recon going. So, looking pretty good here. We're about to secure this to give us, I think, a slight advantage. Since we kept these guys dug in, they've only taken one casualty, and they're under constant fire, so these guys are kind of like the rock here to tie down that corner of my defense. Maybe we can move these guys up and kill that uh, helicopter, and also get some supply vehicles up. We we'll also want to move these back because it looks like they're damaged. This guy may have engaged a tank. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but. This is a good opportunity here for other divisions to deploy helicopters and to kill the infantry, but this guy, this division doesn't have any of that, so you kind of have to rely on just, uh, just the native infantry. Fortunately, the German infantry is pretty good, so you can actually rely on it. It's just fine. So, let's try to pull these guys back here. Um, we don't want any counter like fire coming in. and It's better to reserve and not chase so that you can get supply trucks up and refuel them and repair them. I think we have supply coming in. Yeah, we have supply coming in for these tanks here to refuel them and rearm them. So our positions are looking pretty good here. Um, I'm going to go into my artillery tab, maybe, and uh, grab some Lars launchers. Actually, no, I think actually it's probably better. Let's just grab another pair of Leopards. This way we can have two hunting pairs at the same time. In fact, if we actually want to move up here, they can push up and secure this open ground here. So that is something to consider. And it looks like we have a T-80 here sitting, so... And Rusty Bull, this is an airborne division. Maybe he's just starting to deploy, I'm not sure. Maybe he's just throwing in some units to kind of help out his ally here. Anyways, I like these uh, supply vehicles here. They are slow, so you have to wait for your supply to get there faster. But enemy artillery is going to be a lot less effective against them. So that's the main reason I prefer to use them. You know, I, since, since we're waiting, we could maybe put just a seeing a bit of pressure on these guys here, trying to go up, try to take these guys out. That was sheer luck there that we did not lose our, our guy there. Okay, sweet, but he 
he's taken out. In fact, we can even move him all the way back here. See this guy. He's just gonna sit his ass down right there. Sweet, we got our supply coming up, and just in case, I wanna have a little reserve of supply here so that it's a little bit more available. If our tanks were repaired, I'd be sitting them out right now, but in a second, they should be ready to go engage that T80 BV there. to get those guys repaired too if we get the chance. Yeah, that area is just begging for some tanks to go in. I think actually we didn't have quite enough supply to repair completely. Oh, it looks like we did. Okay. Well, that's perfect then. We'll just send these guys right out. And send these... Uh, Go there. Send these guys to the rear. I always want to get the empty supply out of the way so that you have a better view of what kind of units you actually have at your disposal. So, when you've got tanks like this here, um, you don't actually have to worry too much about things like Metis Armed Infantry unless they hit you directly you're usually going to be strong enough that you can just disregard any hit like that and you'll honestly be just fine. Is that a cluster bomber? That's the one thing that you got to watch out for because those are definitely capable of taking out both leopards in one hit. Looks like this guy that doesn't know that uh, cluster bombers are not effective against infantry. Pretty sure, right? Yeah, all I can do is stress it doesn't kill. So not seeing any enemy, any enemy contact there, so I'm going to pull those guys back. Although I did take out a couple targets on this side. I want to try to get them out of their supply vehicle there. Maybe get some Jaeger here to assist. I don't know why I should be supplying uh, infantry here to the Airborne Division, but sometimes it's just the way it works out when one of your allies has a not-so-good opener. Okay, meanwhile, we've got these tanks here all set to go. And uh, I'll try to give him some recon here as well, out on this side. And some AA too, some longer range A to cover this side. Because this is kind of self-defense AA here to cover the infantry, but when you got this open area, you need something a little longer sometimes. Those are not strong enough there to take out my tanks, but they are definitely strong enough to uh, kill my Rollins. Okay, kind of managing two fronts at once here. are definitely gas guzzlers. They'll run out of fuel pretty quickly. Okay, we got our leopards out here. Ready to 
go. Nice. Now we just need our recon here so they can spot the targets when they bust out of that tree line. And they should be able to shoot us some things out there. I'm not sure exactly what they'll find. Perfect. And we actually probably need more supply up here at this point. For these rear areas, I'm going to try to use these uh, Unimogs, the soft skin trucks, and for the frontline areas where more artillery might be coming in, I'll try to use the uh, hardened, uh, hardened vehicles. Okay, perfect. These guys are pretty much ready to go. It looks like they're taking over a lot more on the uh, AA side now. A chance that that Akula could even kill these, yeah, before they. It looks like they, we got to jump on them, though, so it's not going to be a problem. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I want to dispose. I think they. I don't know how many of those they get. I don't think very many. You want to kind of dispose of those as quickly as you can, if possible. This guy's moving up here, but we can put these guys into this building. And ideally on return fire. We selected them by accident. And then move these guys up here. We've got our Rollins ready, so let's start moving those up. We should be ready for our push over there shortly. Meanwhile, these guys are all refueled and rearmed, so I think we can. Uh, Start a push here and try to take that T80 out. Or I think actually my head right toward the tree line here. I think it might be safer. Uh, because I don't want to move sideways in front of this tree line because it's kind of hard to tell what's in there right now. here against the tanks, the biggest threat is going to be when they're like, pin our guys down. Oh, that guy's, oh, that guy did not manage to make it there. Don't know why he dropped his ordnance so, uh, so low there either, or so far away. This guy's got half health, so we're gonna let this guy go to the tree line first. Let him kind of take precedence there. Then we'll follow up with this one to kind of give some support. Okay, yeah, we're doing a lot of damage here, which is nice. And you can even see a uh, command vehicles there. I know there's a T-80 in there, but I'm a little bit wary about engaging it, so we're going to pull back again, um, just because we're definitely not guaranteed a success there, and we'll bring up a replacement tank for that one. And in other news, here are, we've got a lot of supplies left, so we're going to buy some artillery, because we kind of can afford the luxury now. Looks like these guys have not spotted any, any targets here. Um but we're gonna move these up regardless and see, kind of see what they can, try to see what they see. Yeah, they definitely gotta know that we have lots of AA back there. It might be better now to get like maybe a battle group in three leopards here. And these guys here, when as you can tell, I kind of like to micro, and I haven't lost very many units here in this game, so um, I have a lot of points and too many units, so and that when happens, I just dump it into artillery and just have them fire randomly at something, because I'm sure that they'll find a target that's worth shooting at. Um, look at this, these guys pushed all the way up here and did not find any targets worth, worth hitting.
but we are getting into their rear areas here, it seems. I guess we'll push these guys back to the tree line. Wait for more tank reinforcements to come up here. which means the party's kind of over. I'm glad that he's in our AA envelope, but it's definitely not a guarantee, so you gotta watch out for that. So for the rest of their ammunition, I want them to kind of concentrate on this town here, and that could hopefully give my ally here some support. They keep rolling up helicopters here, and it's not uh, working out too good for them. Yeah, see, you can see the advantage here of having two leopards. Um, so when they both shoot, the enemy just doesn't really get a chance to fight back. Um, which is what you kind of what you're probably going to be wanting to aim for. You don't really want to get the, give the enemy a fair fight. <laughs> um, because if you're doing that, then you're probably doing something wrong. And look at this, we've got recon out here that we can I think, move up safely. I think it's time for these guys to move up here. Wow, that is a lot of missiles coming in. Yeah, let's push those guys, try to push those guys back. I did not mean to move those leopards, just these guys. Maybe a pair of tanks here could be a good little battle group. And they could help push on this side. Nice. Let's move these guys up. I want to make sure these guys are kept fully fueled and all ready to go Con on a constant basis. see a need to move it into this town at the moment this is kind of under our control and I don't want to saturate this area too heavily or else uh, the enemy is just going to take advantage of it so like if they hit with artillery it's better to not be so packed with infantry so I'm going to wait and if they take some casualties I'll move my guys up maybe to replace them well though I'm thinking that right up the center lane here is going to be a good way to take on the enemy because they have a big concentration here it seems. sure where the enemy CV is at though. Alright, let's move again to avoid counter battery. You do 
kind of want to keep your guys uh, as mobile as you can. And uh, let's get a Mar let's try to get a Mars launcher out as well. We'll add that to our artillery spread because we just got a lot of points here that we're kind of holding on to. Okay, this guy is all empty. Excellent. This guy is also empty. Moving back to our supply dump slowly but surely. definitely countering. I mean, it's smart to have this Metis infantry, but when they're not in buildings and they're kind of in the open, they're pretty easy to, to counter and take out on an individual basis. You just don't want them to get overwhelmed, because there is a lot of targets here that are presenting themselves. There's always a chance that you get a critical hit on me as well. Okay, let's pull them back here. We were breaking them down pretty good, but just not overextend. I wish because that guy is just waiting for a chance to to get a kill there. All this AA that we brought up turned out to not be needed as much as I thought, apparently. <laughs> so right now, we're in a pretty good spot. All we have to do is sit here and kind of wait for the timer to run out, and uh, we should succeed. Let's get this guy shooting. This guy back. So now we just kind of wait because the timer is running out. We have a really strong position. So I want the enemy to, to kind of put pressure on me because we're best equipped to deal with them defensively. But if they want to wait, that's also fine because um, I'm just building up my tank strength again for another like push. It looks like both of these guys. Oh, these guys are not ready yet. Okay. Good thing we brought up that extra supply. It should be coming out. There it is. Let's get that supply up here to get those leopards up and running again. Yeah, there's lots of targets here that we can hit. out of the radius there. Okay, as soon as these two are repaired, we'll go on the offensive here. We just need to get the supply trucks up and be ready to attack again. Yeah, another, have another leopard there. Never hurt either. This guy's been sitting here, honestly, for a good amount of time. Just kind of slowly getting... I don't know if I landed a hit on him yet, but if so, I can tell he's being like repaired and resupplied. Looks like enemy AA is not actually very strong here. Just kind of noteworthy. I wonder if that guy took the tank out or not. Okay, you can move to the rear, good sir. You're all empty. Put you guys at fire at will again. Airborne Division is not even having the best time here. Let's push these guys up here. We're already at 90%. 90% of the way to victory. 
should be a good chance to wipe out some of the enemy strength here in this area. And if the other leopard here would arrive, I haven't seen it get here yet. Here it is. I want to have this here as well, and then we'll push up with these this pair uh, on that side. Some like simultaneous pressure there. See, I didn't even notice people leave. Um, but I guess they did know. Sometimes it's not bad to have AI teammates. They like will push forward randomly and they'll kind of reveal new positions for you. So sometimes they can be better than actual teammates in my opinion. For some reason that is not firing. Yeah, just killing some assorted infantry there in the final minutes. So, um, there you go, guys. That's the guide. That was only a 33-minute game. Um, that's the guide there for the 5th Panzer Division. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Let's look at our, like, totals here. So, we killed 6,000 points of enemy units and only lost 810. Um, so, obviously, that's pretty good. Um, that's, like, basically 6 to 1. A little bit higher, like, 6 and 6 to 1? I don't know. 6 to 1 kill ratio there. Um... So I'll probably put that in the video description because hopefully that would get some attention here. But as you can see, um, let's see, how many leopards do we lose? That's what I'm curious about. Okay, we lost one leopard here to that T-80 that we pushed too hard. Or no, two, two leopards. Um, and that's the way it should be because we uh, we moved really hard with these guys. And so, you know, ideally you don't want to be losing leopards, obviously. But when it comes down to it, you are going to lose some. So you want to be pushing with those all the time. And each of our leopards, we kept active here, killing a fair amount of enemy units. Some of them, you know, less than others because they were in a lot quieter positions. But I think our starter ones here got the most kills on the enemy. Um, it's a shame that we didn't get more tank strength. Um, but that was a really good example because the enemy kind of had an airborne division and a tank division there together, uh, working together. Um, and, of course, our AA did good too. I want to see... Our Jeopard, yeah, I mean, obviously these guys got, you know, some kills here. Um, I don't think that our infantry AA, the Fliegerfaust, got anything. Or the, um, def or the like, Flaxvillings, the dual guns, they didn't get any kills. But that's okay, um, because those are kind of there for if the enemy pushes over with helicopters and tries to kill the infantry or with bombers. You don't have that long-range AA around. Those are great for defending, basically for self-defense and for, like, immediate defense of the infantry. But we didn't have that happen. We didn't get pushed that hard. Um, and then here, as you can see, the enemy did not manage to get many kills on us. Only one infantry kill. So that means that we really did a good job here with um, keeping our infantry supplied. The enemy pushed us kind of hard in some cases. But even our sicker arms were able to get like just lots of kills. The Jaegers, I mean, Igla is not exactly a notable kill. But um, our infantry didn't have to be too involved. Our tanks did most of the work. So that's really an ideal example here of how to play. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and I promise if you use your division like this, you got to be cautious, you know. Um, and there were times where I could have pushed and I didn't. But I find caution is always a better way to, you know, to succeed. Um, but that was, that was a good game. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this, please subscribe. Um, I have silent gameplays of these. Like, I think I have like 10 gameplays of this division out where i get kill ratios like this not not as high not as high and kill ratio is not the only thing that matters obviously like you want to be succeeding and like taking command points like we had two tank we had we took a command zone but um you know this is generally a good idea on how on how well you're doing um so anyways i hope that you guys enjoyed the video um please subscribe because i have stuff coming out like this all the time i'm gonna have new division guides coming out and like I said, I have silent gameplays. You can check out lots of other gameplays of this of me playing these. Um, but uh, anyways, if you thought that was good, please drop a like. And um, I will see you guys in the next one. This is your host, Star Destroyer Gaming, signing off.